Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, I'm excited to talk about a concept that's really pivotal, a uh, really important type of filter to be able to create, but it takes some custom logic. So we're gonna talk about how do you keep only values with multiple records in your data set as a filter, okay? So to give you an example of that with our handy dandy Superstore data set, I've got a worksheet here. Uh, how many customers do I have in each region who have placed multiple orders, okay? So already I've sort of pre-built a worksheet to be able to help talk about this. So I've got region on rows, I've got it reinforced on colors, I've got my customer ID on my row shelf, and then I've got my distinct count of order ID uh, on my column shelf, okay? So if I was to go down here in the central region, um, I'm going to scroll down until I find just the people with one order, right? So these are these would not be part of our inclusion, how many people have multiple orders. Um, but just so that we get a bit of a sense for how many people we're talking about here, let me just select all these labels. Okay, so you're going to have to use your eagle eyes here, but uh, I'm going to zoom in on the bottom left corner of my screen. I have just selected 345 marks, okay? So let's just stow that one away. Uh, we should end up... And all said and done, saying 345 people in the central region have made multiple purchases, right? Um, so yes, I can kind of see that here, but let's say I just want a simple chart that just shows one bar per region, 345 for central and whatever those numbers would be for these other regions, okay? So let me duplicate this sheet and then that's fine. I'll just leave this as the second copy. So first of all, let me think about where I even want to start with this. Um, if I did something like just added the count distinct of order ID to my filters card right now, let me do that. I'm going to control drag that pill from columns to filters, creates a copy of it on the fly. Let's keep our aggregation the same. And I'm going to say it has to be at least two purchases made. So now on the status bar, I have my overall number of customers who have made at least two purchases, right? 1,460, but I don't really have that easily broken out by region yet. So of course, to get that count by region, I don't want to see the count of orders on columns. I want to see the count of customers, right? So shortcut here, we're going to right click and drag customer ID to our column shelf and get the count distinct of customer ID. So right now, because customer ID is also on the row shelf, it's just giving me a one. Every customer, there's just one customer represented by that customer. Like, a bit circular, but okay. What happens if we take customer ID off of our row shelf? Okay, let me go ahead and show our labels here. Uh, so even though count distinct of order ID being two, even though that is still on the filters card, uh, what am I trying to say here? I, I, this, it, the filter is not really working correctly, right? Going back to here, remember we had 345 customers in the central region who made two or more purchases. And now this says 629. So it's not really working or at least not the way we want, right? So, so let's talk about, first of all, why is it not working anymore? So this aggregated filter, count distinct of order ID, it is getting applied at the level of whatever dimension is in your worksheet, okay? Right now, the only dimension in our worksheet is region. So what this is doing is it's saying, hey, um, keep only regions where there were at least two orders. Every region had at least two orders, right? This filter is actually not really accomplishing anything right now, whether it's there or not, uh, it's gonna show all four regions. It was working better when customer ID was on my row shelf because then it was saying for each region and for each customer, only keep the customers that had at least two purchases. Okay, so that worked better there. But in order to be able to simplify this down to just what we want, which is just sort of a singular bar chart like this, that's that's not going to that's not going to do the trick. So what we need to do is to create a calculated field. We're going to use a level of detail expression um, to be able to count how many purchases has each customer made. So I'm going to go to my customer ID. I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to create a calculated field. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this um, number of orders per customer. Okay. So now I will just say uh, fixed 
on my customer ID, colon, uh, count distinct of order ID. Okay, so what this is gonna do is it's gonna get all, it's gonna take all of a customer's records all together and then just figure out how many unique order IDs they have. And then the way that that looks on the back end of the data, let's say that, that you um, have made 10 purchases, uh, then there's gonna be, for every one of your 10 rows of data, it's gonna say 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, because it's aggregating it at your customer ID level. Okay, so why does this matter? Well, let me show you, first of all, if I threw this on the column shelf, um, it's, first of all, it's all synced up for these, right? Hey, there's five here, there's five there, right? Uh, but why this matters is if we take our number of orders per customer and we drag and drop this onto the filters card, uh, let's say all values, that's fine. I'm gonna say the at least needs to be two, right? So you can see these are clearly no longer the aggregations at the regional level. We got hundreds of customers per region, thousands of orders. No, two to seven being the range of the values, or one to seven rather, um, that's the number of purchases per customer. So I'll hit OK. And look, we're all the way back to that number I told you to remember earlier, 345. So let's go ahead and look at this in just one other way to sort of make sure that we're on the, the right page here. So if we get our customer IDs, if I just put count distinct of order ID on my text in my marks card, it's going to say, oh, well, this customer made two purchases. OK, cool. Um, if I put order ID on my row shelf, though, then all of a sudden it's going to be like, yeah, this, this customer made two purchases, but that's one order and that's one order. So what our fixed expression number of orders per customer did is it's just, it, excuse all those ugly decimals, but it's just locking in the value, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all one order technically, but this customer actually made five purchases overall. It's keeping all those records. So let me go ahead and pop that fixed expression on the screen one more time. And just one thing to look out for is just to make sure that if you're going to add any other filters, like let's say that you say something like, oh, um, actually I only care about, uh, you know, certain category, just my technology sales. If you want to make sure that that's accurate, it's probably a little bit deeper than I mean to dive right now. Um, let me actually go ahead and just pull this up on my second screen. I want to show you Tableau's order of operations. Okay. Okay. So Tableau's order of operations, um, fixed expressions like what we just wrote get computed before dimension filters. So if you want this to be returning an accurate customer count for you, you'll just want to be careful. Any filter that you want to get processed before the fixed expression should be added to context like what I just did there. Okay. Uh, you can Google context filters and read up all about this, but basically I would say, oh, well, you know, how many customers made this many purchases within the context of technology? Okay, well, right now technology is getting filtered afterwards, so it's not actually giving me the right number necessarily. I want technology to get uh, filtered first and then tell me how many customers in each region made at least two technology purchases. Okay, so just a little bit of a a uh, little bit of a nuance there uh, to, to look out for. Okay, so anywho, I'm going to go ahead and just show that filter and I'm just going to select everything for now. So hopefully that gives you a good primer on uh, this concept of how to keep values with multiple records. This could be used in all sorts of ways. How many students attended multiple schools this year, as an example, right? So um, how many employees have been a part of multiple departments? Um, there's just kind of numerous different ways to do this. And so I hope that was kind of a helpful primer and, and gave you some good thoughts around why you might need this. So thank you so much for following along. I uh, appreciate you all being here and look forward to catching you uh, next week here on the One Number YouTube channel with yet again, another video. Thanks.